Hello, my name is Dr. Latif Ryan Rahman. I'm currently working as a NACIT Medicine Consultant at University Hospitals of Leicester. I'm also working as a trainee representative at the Society for Acute Medicine Council. Together with my colleague, Dr. Salam al alusi we will be taking you through how to do ultrasound-assisted lumbar puncture. I will be showing you how to do ultrasound-assisted lumbar puncture on a mannequin, and my colleague, Dr. Salam al alusi will be showing you how to do ultrasound-assisted lumbar puncture on a live body. The first thing that you want to do is understand what your level of your spinous processes are. And one of the best ways to do that with ultrasound is to start at the level of the sacrum. So let's just start our probe quite low at where the sacrum would be around and wait till we get a hyperechoic hump with a broad base and make sure the hump is at the midline. And once we get a crisp picture and we have the hump in the middle with the broad base, that's my sacrum and level of sacrum. So we will just mark that with a marker. And that is my sacrum level. The next thing is to try to find out the L5, which is the first hyperechoic hump that I get above the sacrum. And once I get a crisp picture of a hyperechoic hump with an acoustic black shadow behind it, and it's in the midline, I know this is my L5 spinous process. And I mark that with a marker. Then I gradually go up to get the next crisp hyperechoic hump with the black acoustic shadow behind it. Once I get it in the midline, and I'm confident that it's in the midline, I mark that. That is my spinous process for L4. And then I gradually go up to get my next crisp hump. So the hyperechoic hump with the acoustic shadow behind it. And once I'm happy that it's crisp and it's in the midline, I mark that and that's my L3. So here you have four landmarks, the sacrum, the spinous process of L5, the spinous process of L4, and the spinous process of L3. Joining them together, we've just got the midline. Technically, we've all, already got early clarity into where our needle should be going. And as we most commonly do, we target the L3, L4 space. So if this is the L3 spinous process, and if this is the L4 spinous process, you, you have early clarity that your needle will be going between them, so somewhere around here. You want to confirm it further that this is indeed the L3, L4 region, and you can go back to the conventional technique. So you palpate the iliac crest. So that's your iliac crest there. You extend your thumb, extrapolate your thumb back to the midline, and it has matched what you just found on ultrasound. So this is your L3, L4. So we know here, but we want to know exactly the point that we want to insert our needle. And to find that exact point, we will be following this up with the midline or the paramedian technique, as you will get to see now. So now that we know where each of our spinous processes are, so L3, L4, L5, and then sacrum, and we want to go to around in the space between L3 and L4, the next step is to understand exactly where I want to put the needle. The first thing we would do is use the midline technique. So in the midline technique, we are trying to put the probe longitudinally, vertically, to capture both the L3 and L4. So as you can see in the screen here, we want to get a really crisp picture. So you can see both the L3 and the L4 hyperechoic humps in the same screen. So what you want to do is to capture the exact midpoint between L3 and L4. And you want to have that in the middle of the screen. So once you have that, you can easily put your thumb just where the middle of the probe is and mark that with the marker. And we have just got our point in which we want to insert 
the LP needle. If we wanted to go for L4 and L5, we can repeat the same thing again. So we can put the probe longitudinally to capture the L4 and L5 spinous process in the same screen. And we can have the humps together in the screen. And we will have the midpoint of the L4 and L5 spinous process in the middle of the screen. And once we have that, we'll put our thumb there to capture the exact point and then mark it with a marker. And we have got roughly the point at which we will insert our LP needle when we want to do it at the level between L4 and L5. The other technique we can use is the paramedian approach. So in the paramedian approach, instead of trying to locate the space between the spinous processes of L3 and L4 or L4 and L5, we are trying to locate the interlaminal space instead. And the way we locate the inter intralaminal space is by locating the articular processes. So as you can see in the screen here, we start in the midline, we we'll locate the spinous processes and the interspinous space. And then we gradually veer laterally, slide laterally, till the spinous processes disappear and the crisp articular processes comes into view. So here you can see we have got two crisp articular processes. And the advantage of this view, as you can clearly see in the screen, is they're more crisp, and they are actually more crisp in real life as well. And you clearly get to see the posterior complex and the anterior complex. So you exactly know the depth that your needle must go to traverse the posterior complex, reach the intrathecal space from which it will collect the CSF. Once you get that, you tilt back to the midline and you gradually tilt it till you get the interlaminal space and you want that in the midline. So you don't want the hump in the midline, you want the interlaminal space in the midline and you've got it reasonable in the midline here. And once you do that, you mark that level with the marker. And you can take the probe out, and you've just got the interlaminal space. Extrapolate back to the midline. And where it crosses the midline, that is your exact point where your needle must be inserted. That's for L3 and L4. My name is Dr. El Alusi, and I am one of the acute medicine consultants at the Leicester Royal Infirmary, and I will be demonstrating the ultrasound assisted lumbar puncture marking technique. Firstly, ensure your patient is in the correct position and use the conventional landmarks to identify as a rough guide where you'll be scanning and then performing the lumbar puncture. After that, take your ultrasound probe, and in this case, I'm using a curvilinear probe, which is able to look deeper than the linear probe demonstrated by Dr. Rahman earlier. The linear probe on most ultrasound machines is limited to between six and nine centimeters depth. The first step is to identify the midline of the spine by identifying and then marking the spinous processes. Place your probe and then identify the narrow hyperechoic humps and ensure they are in the center of the ultrasound screen. Then mark the center of your probe on the patient's back. Slide the probe to identify the spinous processes above and then below. You could start this part at the sacrum and work your way up as demonstrated earlier, or as in this case, start at the area felt using the conventional landmarks.
Once marked, you can then draw an imaginary line through these points, and this will be the midline of the spine where you will be inserting the needle. The next step would be to mark the location of the spaces in between the spinous processes by use of the median or paramedian approach. Place your space in the center of the ultrasound screen. and then mark the center of the probe on the patient's back. You can also mark another space below that. If you then slide laterally, you can see the articular processes and hopefully the posterior complex and estimate how deep you need to insert the LP needle to reach the intrathecal space. Once marked, you can extrapolate the marks to intersect the midline and that will be the point of insertion of your LP needle. We have identified two points of insertion here. You can now clean the area and continue with the lumbar puncture procedure.